Resuming debate, uh, the Honourable Member for Langley Aldergrove. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I guess it should not have come as a complete surprise that this Liberal government would make uh, strategic procedural moves to limit my freedom of speech as a member of parliament wishing to speak up on exactly that topic, freedom of speech. I've heard from so many of my constituents that they were shocked at this government's attempt to limit their freedom by regulating the internet, which until now has been a newfound tool uh, of freedom of expression. People are starting to understand what the term net neutrality means and they want it protected. They're also starting to wake up to the prospect that their government wants to regulate this forum, the new public square. The government says they want to level the playing field. Canada's Conservatives support competition between large uh, foreign streaming uh, services and Canada's broadcasters, and we champion Canadian arts and culture. But Conservative government would do so without compromising Canadians' fundamental rights and freedoms. We are calling on the Liberals to withdraw Bill C-10 or to amend it to protect freedom. If this is not done, a Conservative government will stand up for Canadians and repeal this deeply flawed legislation. While the NDP and the Bloc may be willing to look the other way on the freedom of expression, Canada's Conservatives will not. So what went wrong? Well, the deeply flawed draft legislation Bill C-10 became even more problematic after the Liberals had their way at committee. Uh, we have heard them say in this chamber on many occasions that user-generated content will not be regulated under the legislation. And they refer us to Section 2.1, which specifically exempts users from the new limiting regulations. But Section 4.1 would have exempted social media sites like YouTube and TikTok that consist of only um, user-uploaded programs. Except that in committee, the Liberals voted down this very important freedom of speech protector, even though their original draft legislation contained it. So where does that leave us? Well, people using the internet, speakers, are exempted from the platforms, uh, but the platforms, sorry, are exempted, but the platforms they use are not. So the freedom really becomes illusory. And that's what people are upset about with Bill C-10, and that's why conservatives are fighting hard against it. We've heard uh, the Liberals say also that they just want big tech to be paying their fair share. In principle, we support that. The Conservative Heritage Committee members uh, proposed an amendment to C-10 that would have limited these limiting regulations to online undertakings with more than $50 million a year in revenue and 250,000 or more subscribers in Canada. If that amendment had passed, Bill C-10 would apply only to large streaming services, but the Liberals rejected it. I don't know why. This is a common sense compromise put forward by the Conservatives to save the initial intent, the integrity of this legislation, while still protecting Canadians' freedom of expression. Now, we've heard quite a bit about this. The idea of the CRTC regulating traditional media for Canadian content is deeply entrenched and widely accepted in Canadian culture. So why not the internet too, which arguably is becoming the new preferred media? At first blush, that may make sense, but here's the problem. The legislation would regulate Canadian content by means of discoverability regulations that would require social media sites to like YouTube to change their algorithms to determine which videos are more or less Canadian, all depending on a bureaucratic's opinion as to what is sufficiently Canadian. We say, let the market decide. This is not what the internet is, and that is not what Canadians want. We're hearing hands off. We're hearing about the democratization of the freedom of speech. The internet is a new invention, and it has given people, anybody with a computer, anybody with an iPad, anybody with a, with a smartphone, the ability to publish on the internet and to be heard. And it has led to the success of many, many artists, including Canadian artists. So th does that mean that the uh, internet and the contest posted on it should not be regulated at all? Well, of course not. 
the internet is subject to all laws of general application, such as laws uh, promoting uh, laws against promoting hatred, laws against inciting violence. Uh, there's laws for uh, protection of children. There's laws against slander and libel, just to name a few. Our freedom of speech, as protected by the Canadian Rights Charter of Rights and Freedoms, is not unlimited, as my law professor explained to us in our first day of constitutional law. The freedom of expression does not give a person the right to yell fire in a crowded movie theater. Section 2B of the Charter says everyone has a fundamental freedom of expression, but Section 1 of the Charter says that those rights and freedoms are subject to such reasonable limits prescribed by law as can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. And until the Liberals started talking about Bill C-10, that's what everyone understood to be the nature of this new medium called the Internet. The laws of general application should apply. Every other free and democratic country in the world understands that to be the case. And only Canada would go so far as to tell user content social media platforms what to promote and what to demote. And therein lies our contention with Bill C-10. We don't, do not stand alone. Uh, this is what Peter Menzies, the former commissioner of the CRTC, had to say about Bill C-10 in its current state. He says, it is difficult to contemplate the levels of uh, moral hubris, incompetence, or both that would lead people to believe that such an infringement of rights is justifiable. And here's a quote from University of Ottawa professor Michael Geist. Quote, in a freedom, in a free democratic society, we don't subject basic free speech to regulation in this way. Of course, there are limits to what people can say. But the idea that a broadcast regulator has any role to play in basic speech is, I think, anathema to free and democratic society where freedom of expression is viewed as one of the fundamental freedoms. So, Madam Speaker, with the um, support of experts like this, we, are, we <clears throat> the Conservative Party has been promoting our opposition to Bill C-10 aggressively and, I might say, effectively. And what is this government's response? Well, shut down debate. Last week, with the help of the Bloc and the NDP, the Liberal government shut down debate at committee, and now they want to shut down debate in this parliament. You've got to love the irony of that. Here we are debating free speech, and the government is aggressively shutting down parliamentarians' right to be the voice for their constituents, Canadians who have come to appreciate the freedom, the flexibility, and the effectiveness of having their voices heard in this 20 per century platform. Social media platforms are the new public square and free speech on those platforms in the form of user generated contests must not fall under the regulatory purview of the CRTC. Only the Conservative Party is standing up to protect this fundamental right that all Canadians enjoy. The government has misled Canadians about this bill. Exempting user content was a key part of C10's limitations, something we accepted, and that helped get it through the parliamentary readings and committee without more dissent. But removing that exemption, at the very least, at the, sorry, at the very last minute, makes Bill C-10 unacceptable, the most breathtaking power grab over online speech we've ever seen in Canada. Our Liberal government wants to limit our rights to be able to fight against that. And that's why Conservatives are standing up. Thank you, Madam Speaker.